Welcome to Tank Tuesday, folks. Here's a quick look at our 300 gallon aquarium. We've got two pet bass. This is Bonnie, there's Clyde, and then we also have a big mean bluegill named Sheriff. And we have some special things in store for you in this video. In honor of Thanksgiving, we are gonna give our fish a feast. So they eat regular feeder minnows all year long. We feed them every day, and they eat the same thing every day. But since it's Thanksgiving week, we're gonna do something special for them. And in last Tank Tuesday's video, we asked you all what you would like to see us feed them. And we had over a thousand comments say feed them frogs. I'm gonna apologize in advance, but you gotta give the people what they wanna see. Also, here's a look at our 55 gallon tank and our minnow tank. And we have two pet bass in here and also a couple pet catfish, including one albino catfish, Casper, who hides up under that log. But we're not gonna leave them out of the feast. We usually feed them something pretty small because you can tell Moby he's only about three to four inches long. So we are gonna do a tiny cricket feast. We're gonna put a bunch of baby crickets in there that we've gotten. There's our other pet bass, Moby. So they're almost identical twins there and they will be having a cricket feast later on today. All right, so before we get started with the feedings, I've got a couple of quick announcements. If you're an angler, we're having a Thanksgiving sale this week, all week long, and it's 25% off everything in stock. So it's a good time to restock your tackle boxes or buy some items for some Christmas gifts. And the second thing is I wanted to share a quick clip that one of our subscribers sent us of their dog, Ruby. They were watching our latest Tank Tuesday video and their dog watches the videos with them. And let's just say he got pretty excited whenever we pulled out the laser pointer. What is it, Ruby? <laughs> She's trying to sniff the cat like it's real. <laughs> oh God, there's two and a laser. What is it, Ruby? What is it? She's like, let me get it. Oh God, she's trying to bite it. She tried to bite it. <laughs> I can't believe it. And that's what it's all about. We love seeing clips like this of you all enjoying Tank Tuesday and in this case even a pet enjoying our Tank Tuesday video. And so if you're not subscribed, make sure to hit that button so you can join us every Tuesday. All right, and one last announcement. A lot of you guys have been asking about our original Bama Bass wooden lettering that we were putting in the tank. We're gonna do that in this video. We're probably gonna remove this big piece of Dragonstone and put a lot of live plants in there in our Bama Bass lettering. All right, here's a look at the frogs. We have two albino frogs and two regular frogs. I thought about putting them all in there at once, but I think we're gonna do it one at a time and we may end up not putting them all in there. And we're gonna start out with one of the small ones. All right, we're about to start the feeding. And most of you all know me and know that I've dedicated a lot of time in my life to topwater frog fishing, but I have to admit, I've never actually seen a fish eat a live frog. It's always been my topwater plastic frogs. But I think that's about to change right now. We're about to see a bass eat a live frog. Liz? Wow. Spit it out. Ate it again. Spit it out. This is so funny. She will not eat it. Wait, the bluegill ate it. They keep spitting the frogs out. I wonder if this is what would really happen out there in the wild. Bonnie's still interested, you can see. She's waiting on Sheriff to spit it out again. That is incredible. So the bass ate it, spit it out three times, and now the bluegill has eaten it. It looks like it's finally eaten it. All right, let's, let's go in with another one. Let's see if the bass will eat it again. That's what you call the topwater frog explosion on the last one. Bonnie got it. Oh, it's here. They don't see it. Uh oh, topwater blow ups. All right, folks, so here's an update. The latest frog went through our overflow drain up there. So. As all, and it is trapped back here in our back little area here that the fish can't access. So that frog has escaped the tank of fish 
and he will get his release. We'll remove him and release him back into the wild. So that's the way it is. If they can make it out of the tank, they get the freedom. That one survived. All right, so now we're gonna go in with one of the albino frogs. Clyde got it. It's running. Sheriff ate it again. There's no way in this video that our bluegill is going to eat all of our frogs with two bass in the tank. This is. You never know what to expect on Tank Tuesday. I think it's the texture of it. And them have never having never eaten that type of texture. That's frog, sure. <laughs> yeah, well Sheriff's got a mouthful. Let's it's go. The biggest, one. the biggest one of the bunch. They are killing it at the top. Alright, Bonnie's got that one. Let's see if she eats it. Yep, I think I think that one's going down. That was pretty incredible. Yep, she definitely ate that one. Well Yep. No letting that one go. Sheriff, looks like he's digested that one in full now. Clyde's the only one that didn't eat a frog. But like I said, you never know what you're going to see during Tank Tuesday. There's always something unexpected, and it usually comes with this little savage right here. A bluegill eating a frog. That is something I never thought I would see. All right, y'all been asking for a different type of feeding, insect feeding. We got some micro crickets, and I'm telling you, these are the smallest crickets I've ever seen. They may look a little big in this cage, but they are tiny. So they're perfect for feeding our tiny pet bass. That is one small cricket. Ready? Next up. Oh, that was a battle right there. I don't know which one got it. I think Moby got it. You can start seeing his belly when it gets full. Let's see if McCoy can get some. Try to drop one over to the right there. Got him. So McCoy just got those two. I know Moby's going to come back around here and see it. We got that one. McCoy. It's a cricket buffet. All right, last cricket for tonight. All right, y'all sleep good. You got a full belly. All right, we got Liz with some aquascaping tips. Yeah, so we're gonna do some re-aquascaping in our 300 gallon aquarium today. So what we were looking for are tall leafy plants today. And I've got everything laid out here. The first thing you wanna do, as always, is take your hydrogen peroxide and spray it all down and then rinse it really good in fresh water. So a new thing that we have here is the plant weights. And so this, you can wrap it around the bottom of your plants. And with the bass, they tend to knock the plants up out of the... Yeah, Sheriff definitely likes to root up every <laughs> plant we have in the aquarium. Yeah, for sure. So it doesn't take much of this, but it does weigh them down into the gravel better and so that they can get that root system going. So if you have big plants, folks, plant weights are key. All right, so we have the dragonstone removed. It stirred up a lot of dust in there. And we got one major problem. All of our letters, I had them to where they would sink because I kept them underwater for about four months, but now they're back to floating, as you can see. So I'm gonna have to leave them. I'm gonna have to put something on there that's gonna weigh them down. And probably by this time next week, they'll be back waterlogged and they'll be able to go in the tank because right now, if we put them in there, they would just float to the top. So that was a mistake on my part, but I got them back in the water and we should be ready to go next week. We're gonna go ahead and put the plants in now. All right, so now we have the plants planted. Liz did a good job with that. We're gonna go in with the Bama Bass lettering next week. This one kind of drifted over a little bit on us, but it's gonna give them a few more places to hide in here, and it definitely helps the look of the aquarium. But now we're gonna do like we do at the end of all of our Tank Tuesday videos. We're gonna answer questions from you all from last Tank Tuesday while we show feeding clips. Jeez, that's so Liz. All right, first question comes from DNC Bassin. So how come Bonnie seems like she is definitely outgrown Clyde? Is it because most females are always larger than males? Yes, that is definitely the case. So it's very average for a female bass to get up to eight pounds or bigger. And even the world record 
was a female bass that weighed 22 pounds but males can never get that big they're always smaller and it would be rare to see a five pound male largemouth bass next question comes from b-roll and bass try and see how bonnie and clyde react to a robotic toy fish well we actually have a fish lure that is animated that it's on its way to us now so whenever we get it we'll put it in the tank and see how they react next question comes from crypt curse imagine if moby fell into the minnow tank so guys if you hadn't seen the video from last week i'll play a quick clip of it now moby jumped out of the 55 gallon tank and landed on the ground and we put him back in and he was just as happy as could be but what he, Crypt is saying is he actually bounced off the minnow tank when he hit the bottom. And if Moby would have landed in the minnow tank and there was 20 plus minnows in there, he probably would have died of overeating oh because he can eat minnows faster than any fish I've ever seen. And he would have gorged himself. So it's actually a good thing he did not land in the minnow tank. All right, next question comes from Bill Nye 25 Did Moby eat the algae eaters, and are you ever going to show us how the Colombian sharks are doing in your friend's tank? Unfortunately, yes, Moby did eat the algae eaters, and I think he ate them like within the first week. And we will also give you an update on our sharks here pretty soon. We'll go to our friend's tank and show you how they're doing. All right, and last question comes from LZ Outdoors. Where on earth is that crappie? Well, we still owe you all a crappie. Liz and I are going to go out for micro fishing for a pet crappie part three here pretty soon. And hopefully we can finally be successful and get that crappie in the tank with Moby and McCoy. And we're all, we already have the name for it. It's going to be Hatfield. That way it can be like a Hatfield and McCoy, just like Bonnie and Clyde. All right, so our subscriber tank clip comes from Bryce Klein. And he sent us a clip in of his bluegills eating some worms. And he says the big one is named Oscar. The middle one is named Day Day. And the small one is named Keegan. And don't ask me why their names are that. Laugh out loud. So, Bryce, I won't ask you why you named them that. But I appreciate you sending us a clip in. If, you, if we have inspired you... To get a tank of your own, send us a feeding clip or any clip of your new tank and we may post it on an upcoming Tank Tuesday video. But I hope y'all enjoyed this video. Make sure to hit that subscribe button so you can see us next week. We have another secret micro pet bass feeding coming up next week. So you want to make sure you watch that. But we will see you all next Tuesday. Sky. Sweet talking pride would holler as Bonnie.